Here is a very important chart. If you want to understand what's happening in the job market right now, and if you want to try and project out what's going to happen over the next 6 to 12 months. Here's a chart of unemployed but seeking work over job openings in the U.S. And at Daggerfin, we've been looking at this chart really since the start of COVID, of course, to try and understand what's happening with the gap between the number of people looking for work and then the number of open roles. We've seen the headlines and the news over the last year of you know, 4.2, 4.3, 4.5 million people uh, quitting and starting new jobs every single month, which is just an anomaly in terms of, of, of what usually happens in the job market on a month-over-month basis. Um, and we've also then been looking at, and, and I'm sure you've seen the headlines around how there are somewhere between 10 and 11 uh, million open jobs uh and while we're sitting at 3.6% unemployment. And because we work in the employer brand space, because we, we, we're always trying to understand the labor markets here at Daggerfin, um, this delta between unemployed but seeking work and job openings is something that, that we've been trying to, to put our thumb on for, for the longest time. And, uh, and if you look at the chart there, a, a, a quote-unquote healthy economy, which you know, take it for what it is, is it, you know, it felt ra- rather smooth going into COVID. Um, a healthy economy should have more open jobs than people seeking work. Because um, then that implies that you've got a low unemployment rate uh, and, and uh, that there is some churn in the market, which is, which is healthy. Um, the issues start happening, of course, uh, when COVID happened and companies started doing layoffs and, and pulling back hard. You had a, a ton of people looking for work, close to 25 million people looking for work, and open jobs falling, uh, you know, to, to about 5 million. And, and that gap is where you get, a, a, you know, an unhealthy economy because there's too many people vying for too few positions. In the pendulum of, of power, so to speak, companies then have really the pick of the litter in terms of the, the, the employees that they want, and you get basically a, a large swath of the the, uh, the labor pool unable to find work. And what's been really interesting about the last two years um, since the start of the pandemic is how quickly jobs in the U.S. have rebounded. And to the point to where, you know, the, midway through 21, uh, we had the two lines cross over again. And uh, we had more job openings than unemployed people. And you know, I, I have a video from maybe six months ago uh, where I talk about that that wedge that was forming uh, between job openings and unemployed, and and really the economy as it as it st- as it stood wouldn't really resolve itself and, and and get back to a place that looked familiar to us until we were able to close that wedge. And and at the time, of course, the wedge was just getting wider and wider. This was probably at the beginning of twenty two. Um, or at the tail end of 21, I'd say. And, uh, you know, as that wedge was was getting wider and wider, I think the idea that that we would be able to to, to bring the, the pendulum back somewhere in the middle to where employers and employees had to kind of equal power in, in, in a negotiation, I think just seemed far-fetched. And, and there was also no end in sight because these things were kind of sloped at, at 30% both ways. What's been fascinating about the latest jobs numbers that have come out has been the what is basically a closing of this of this wedge, and it's it is what needs to happen for us to get to some level of normalcy again, right? If we if we look at kind of the the numbers from twenty nineteen going into twenty twenty, you want to get back to around uh, stable to where you know you've got a, a few more. Uh, job openings and unemployed uh, but seeking work workers and it looks like we're trending back down towards that direction now I don't think that what I think is going to happen is we're going to get a crossover again and then you know it's going to take time before we you know we get to equilibrium again Um, but this is the start of what I think is is something that needs to happen for the job space to to look a little bit more normal Um, this is probably what needs to happen for people to feel less confident 
to four, you know, four million a month to be churning jobs so quickly. Um, and I think the the second order effect of, of this, and we see it with with some of our clients in the executive search space, is that companies pull back really hard on on job openings. So in the article that I pulled this uh, chart from, um, they have an economist from Indeed, the job site, who says job openings have slowed down. But there's still a lot of job openings for job seekers right now. They're just not seeing further pick up or increase in those opportunities. And and so the idea that, okay, we can slow it down to where um, there's no more growth is one thing. But I think what we're seeing anecdotally with our clients is that these slopes are going to, they're going to come down really hard in terms of the number of job openings. Um, you're seeing a bunch of layoffs in, in large cap tech, high growth tech, uh, we just saw the news coming out of China that the Caterpillar sales have, have come down, which is an, uh, an industry that um, I think in, indicates CapEx uh, and, and where companies are, are spending their money. So I've talked a lot about how um, advertising spend and headcount are the two quickest places to go look at a balance sheet and see, okay, the, the, these companies are pulling back. Third would be CapEx. And I think as soon as we start seeing companies like Caterpillar, like the, the, these industrial companies that, that that in order to buy their equipment require a large outlay of, of, of money from, from firms or from organizations, I think that would be kind of the third shoe to drop. Um, and then that's when we start to see a real, I think, pullback across. And now, now it's interesting because there are still industries um, healthcare being one, uh, you know, th- that are still hiring. There are a lot of uh, startups and, and, and high growth companies in, in healthcare and, and certain other spaces. Mental health, I think, is another one where um, there's there's been some, there's something that's happened over the last 24 months where, where demand for those products are, are genuinely up versus, you know, I use, I use the canonical now, Peloton, where, where demand kind of flipped up for a second and everybody made decisions based on inflated demand. But there are certain industries that, that have really pulled forward the future in a way the, the you know demand that might have been there five ten years from now is the level of demand that they are right now and these are going to be fine they're gonna they're gonna continue to to have job openings and if um, if you were a job seeker looking for to looking to, to make a move into a, a, an industry that seemed a little bit more safe I'd say in a recessionary environment I'd say you probably want to go look at the industries that that have been able to pull forward demand in a sustainable fashion. That's not a bad idea. Um, but the gist of, of this this recording is really to, to say that the wedge between the number of open jobs and the number and the number of unemployed workers seeking work is 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 has reversed, and we're in the beginning innings of seeing just how steep this reversion is. Um, but my opinion, and, and this is based on anecdotal evidence, that, you know, from from our clients and what we're seeing in terms of demand, uh, these two curves are gonna they're gonna cross over again relatively quickly, I think. Uh, and as marketers, as people that work in human capital, as uh, really anybody who's tied to who who pays attention to the jobs, I think it's 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 prudent to understand that that this probably is is on the table in terms of a of an outcome and. Do what you will with that information, um, you know, because because the worst thing is to to sit sit here six months, twelve months later, and say, you know what, I knew that that was coming, but I didn't, I didn't act on it early. So, uh, yeah, that, I think it's an important chart to pay attention to over the next few months, and I'm going to be looking forward to to paying attention to this chart, of course, going forward.